The final year for the UCLA Bruins in the Pac-12 will be an interesting one for sure. And it, it, Chip Kelly has done a great job of getting UCLA to a point where they're competing with the best of the best. And this year shouldn't be an exception. The 10 guys we'll talk about today provide some excitement for the long-term future as well as the short-term. We're going to start with a more long-term option in Dante Moore. Will he win the starting quarterback job for now? Probably not, but he is the future of this program. I think that arm arm strength will be the biggest concern for him from what we've heard from fall fall camp so far, but he is an extremely talented player. The former five-star from Detroit will be the future of this team. It's just a matter of, is he going to be starting this year or is he just going to have to wait till next year? The offense is in good hands for now and the amount of playmakers that they'll have coming back when he takes over will be good. And so maybe it's just a matter of holding your breath and just waiting until he's able to take the reins fully. The defense was the group that probably has to take a step forward this year if they want to be competitive once again. And Darius Mwasa, the former Hawaii transfer, had an okay year, maybe not the best of what they wanted, but he is still a proven playmaker, a reliable tackler who can make big plays for this defense. And again, this defense was pretty good in some areas, but struggled also in others. So finding ways to be a little bit more consistent, finding ways to be uh, a little bit less uh, porous and giving up big plays will be a big thing. And Moasau is just one of those guys that can help in that regard. A player that they brought in from the transfer portal, which UCLA did a great job of utilizing the transfer portal last year and the year before, J. Michael Sturdivant. It's interesting to see what a Cal player can do because when you produce 755 yards and seven touchdowns at Cal, that should say something. However, it's just, was it, he was just such a focal point that that's why his production was so high. But again, it's Cal. Cal hasn't been one of the more explosive teams in college football. So a guy like Sturdivant putting up that kind of production could be even more explosive with UCLA in Chip Kelly's system. That'll be something to keep an eye on that. But the defense is probably the, the one that we really have to watch because this group could have been better in terms of getting after the quarterback. They finished 58th in the country tackles for loss. They finished 109th and a guy that can help improve that is Gabriel Murphy, the former North Texas transfer got a, got his taste of, of power five football and at times was showed that what he can do, but also we didn't see the consistency. So if he's able to find ways to handle power five uh, competition better I think you're looking at a better defense, a disruptive defense. And if you're able to be more disruptive, that takes a lot of pressure off your secondary because if the quarterback doesn't have time to throw, it doesn't matter how long a wide open his guys are or how much time they need because they're not going to be open. It's not going to matter. And the defense, again, is the X factor for UCLA this year. Now, the I will say that the, the amount of talent they have returning offensively is there. Whether or not they have that proven playmaker yet, we're not really sure, but a guy like Cam Brown has the ability to be an absolute nightmare for anybody. And when you look at what Chip Kelly has done, all he's done is produce really explosive offenses in college and really explosive playmakers. And Cam Brown fits that description. If he's able to even take a slight step forward in terms of production, then you're looking at an offense that will be just fine, even without DTR, even without Zach Charbonnet. That will be something to keep an eye on. A guy who could replace Zach Charbonnet is TJ Harden. Six foot two, 215 pounds, a solid season. He averaged 7.4 yards per carry. And he is someone who the coaching staff is really high on. He could have a big time impact on this offense. And we, again, when you look at what Chip Kelly has done with rushing attacks in his previous stops, especially at Oregon, you would know that a guy like TJ Harden could be special with that track record. A lot of the pressure will go from who's going to be able to replace DTR. Ethan Garbers gets his first shot of doing that. And it's just a matter of how long does he keep the job with Dante Moore behind you. There's a lot of pressure on you to produce and Ethan Garbers could be a reliable player. We're not really sure what we're going to get from him, but I know that he's a fun player in terms of potential, in terms of what he could be for this offense. And again, in Chip Kelly's system, at times, you just need to be a distributor. You need to be a game manager. I know that has a negative connotation to it, but Ethan Garbers has so much talent around him, but at times, he just needs to get the ball to his guys and let them do most of the damage. So that's something to keep an eye on. 
that is a, a really fun thing to watch, especially with this team, especially with this offense. And then if you're doing your job on offense, then most of the pressure goes to the defense and that is pretty much a given. But again, a guy like Grayson Murphy, Gabriel's brother, who also comes from North Texas, someone who had maybe a little bit more success, nine tackles for loss, five sacks. He is someone who could have a major impact on the Bruins season. If you're able to, like I said, if you're able to be more disruptive, which UCLA was not a very disruptive defense last year. If you're able to be more disruptive, you help your defense as a whole because you're, you're changing things up. You're putting offenses behind the sticks. And that's huge for, again, for a group that needs to find ways they need to find a lot of new playmakers offensively. So maybe they need time to gel on that side of the ball. But if the defense can take a step forward, then it, it gives them more time to figure things out. And honestly, with the, the beginning of their season, they play Coastal Carolina and they travel to San Diego State. That's not really a big deal, but week four sends you to Utah. You need to have things figured out by then. And another group that needs to figure things out is the running back position. Carson Steele comes in from Ball State, and this staff really likes what they have in Carson Steele. He is a proven playmaker from, from Ball State who has over 2,400 yards and 20 touchdowns on his career already. Obviously, going from the MAC to Power 5 is a much different transition, but it's a, a transition that I think Carson Steele is ready to make. I know that this staff believes that he was super underrated and super overlooked in the transfer portal, and they think they have something really good in him. It's just a matter of finding that consistency and finding ways to get him the football out in space and, and creating running lanes for him. The defensive side of the ball, like I said, they are the one that needs to take a step forward, but there's plenty of talent returning. Le- Leitu Latu at six foot five, 265 pounds, finally got to showcase his talent, and he did not waste any time reminding everyone that he – was a former four-star with a ton of potential. 12 and a half tackles for loss, 10 and a half sacks. He was a big reason why this group probably wasn't worse in terms of being disruptive, but he is a big reason why they should be better in 2023. He is a big reason why this defense should be a feared group if they're playing at their peak, if they're playing well together. And that front seven has a ton of potential this year. If you look at the other guys, like Jay Toya is coming back. You you look at some of the players they have returning. There's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot for offenses to fear. And it's just a matter of being consistent and finding ways to win football games because you're playing consistently. I mean, they won nine games last year. Maybe that's not going to happen this season. And maybe it will. But I think that if you're able to put things together, if you're able to find consistency, find new playmakers on offense and defense, then Chip Kelly is going to continue overachieving on his way to the Big Ten. So this will be a fun group to watch. Is this a Pac-12 championship contender? Right now I'm going to say no, but I think that you're looking at a team that could be there when it's all said and done. It's just a matter of those things we talked about before. And if anybody, if I'm going to trust anybody to get the job done in college football, Chip Kelly is pretty, pretty high on that list.